It's about time you and I sit down, strap ourselves in, and talk about the PlayStation Vita's PlayStation Store, which it's going to be mostly me talking, so you can sit there passively and hopefully you'll enjoy this or take something of value out of it, which I'm not expecting, but um, let's look at the PS Vita Store together. Now, before we really get into this, I should mention it's raining currently, and so if you hear a little like clicking and clacking, that's the raindrops hitting my AC, which is very close to my recording equipment. So overall, in hindsight, good choice of positioning on my part. And that's why this is such a high production upload. So let's open up the store. And we're doing this, of course, with a direct capture on a PlayStation Vita TV. And it very much is a PS Vita TV for me, where that's the name of this in in Japan and most of Southeast Asia. When it came to the West, it was renamed to simply PlayStation TV, but for me, it is a PS Vita TV, but I have my main US account on here. And uh, the thing is with Japanese PlayStations up until PS5, all controllers, um, it's just baked in, OS wide, circle is to enter, X is to go back, which for me, you know, jumping between uh, you know, Western and, and Eastern PlayStation hardware, I'm kind of used to it, but uh, for most others that usually trips people up. And that's always for UI elements. By the time you boot up a game or something, um, it goes back to normal if you're playing like a US game on a Japanese PlayStation, if it's region free. Uh, but we're looking at the PS Vita store. Uh, right away, we should mention, you know, this is very much something where the UI was made in mind for a smaller screen and also for touch input before Sony allowed um, on-screen button prompts and controls so it's kind of an afterthought but it, it still works relatively relatively okay like it's not a, a problem to navigate um, on screen and I know for a lot of folks once they finally implemented this they preferred it over the the touch input but I always found that PS Vita in general with its UI and the bubbles in the store was always great for touch I thought it was good responsive um, of course, you've got larger panels and you've got this sort of slight skeuomorphic design with these buttons where, I mean, this isn't really replicating anything per se, but you know, these like buttons in the middle, right? With featured new releases, family fun, like there, there's an impression pushed in when you select uh, different ones, which is kind of skeuomorphic in, in general, but um, right away, of course, we're seeing some very old titles in PlayStation Now, which it's funny because, you know, PS Now, we only just recently lost the naming of PS Now with the PlayStation Plus revamp, but PS Now game streaming was closed on Vita back in 2017, around there, April, I think I want to say. Um, that was PS Vita, PS3, it was a whole list of closure uh, closures. So it was those two platforms and also Sony Bravia and some Samsung TVs because that was at the time where, and it's so funny with Sony because they're always... I find that they're usually ahead of their time on so many initiatives and things. Nowadays, it's like Microsoft is doing just that, trying to get Game Pass and uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming everywhere, and they're expanding it beyond Xbox consoles. And it's like, Sony tried to do that seven, eight years ago, <laughs> which is so early, because even nowadays, it seems kind of early to do that. But um, yeah, they closed this in 2017, but uh, that was something where on PS Vita, and PlayStation 3, there was a, a very, sh a very, I want to say, sh there was a very small window of, uh, and I'm pretty sure this was the case, where you could stream PS4 games on a Vita or a PS3. Uh, so the shutdown notice crossed over just a little bit with PS4 games finally being added to PlayStation Now. Just some slight trivia there. But uh, otherwise, we've got some, you know, stuff on here like Hateful Boyfriend, which I do have on PlayStation 4 with a full 100%. Um, Breach and Clear. Man, if you're into PlayStation Vita, you know that game, physical, is four or $500, very expensive, and that's the running theme for Vita, is that the physical games are pretty pricey. Um, and that's the other weird thing, is that the first two years of PS Vita had a lot of, um, you know, co console quality-ass games, and then eventually Sony realized that wasn't going to be sustainable, and so they got in bed with a lot of indies, and so a lot of indie games started shipping, and, and it's like, the first two years of those console quality games are generally pretty affordable in terms of buying them physically. And then everything after, which was Limited Run or East Asia Soft, like all those are kind of in the, the minimum territory of like 40 to $50, and that's minimum. Anything desirable goes up to 70, 80, and of course, 100 plus dollars. But um, anyway, we're on a PS Vita TV, so 
right away under the all category, I'd have to, you know, look at things that are going to be compatible for PS TV, which once this device came out, <laughs> you've already got missing images. But once this device came out, um, it was developer mandated to support PS TV. Um, so there just had to be a way to make sure that functionally the game was going to work and, and run no problem. Uh, but I think they did allow exceptions if you were a very touch heavy game. Um, but there was a situation where conceivably if your game could be played on a PS TV, at that point they wanted to uh, ensure that all titles moving forward could be could be utilized. But you know Sony has on-screen button cursors that you can bring up for front and rear touch. So you know, there's ways to unlock the full playability, but otherwise uh, keeping your system vanilla, that's how it is. And we've got some uh, games on here, obviously, so. It's weird how they always did this once they started to, to, to do it alphabetically. And it was like A to D, E to H, I to L, M to O. And like the letters in the middle, it's like I'm, you know, an adult, but I'd still have to like go through the alphabet again to be like, which letter is, if I couldn't find it, if it wasn't starting or ending, like I would have to like run the alphabet through my head and be like, okay, where, where is this thing that I'm, that I'm trying to find? But there's that. Uh, hey, classics. Why don't we take a look at these right away? And with classics, um, this was always really weird because if you dive into classics, right? So one piece of content that Vita is going to see is, uh, well, PS3 could see this stuff too, but directly on PS Vita where it made sense was, um, so you've got uh, PlayStation Minis, which it's kind of strange that those are considered classics, but they are from the PSP, PS3 timeframe. So, uh, and they're playable on Vita. So, that, you know, they're, they're under here. This includes Minis, PS1 and PSP, but it's PSP stuff that we want to also note here because, you know, it was gonna be a, uh, for PlayStation Vita, this would be more considered, you know, backwards compatibility. So you're playing, you could play digital PSP stuff, and Vita was great for playing uh, PSP stuff at the time because you could actually, you could do custom controls. And so in that way, you could utilize the second stick. And for some games, that was super useful because if you're doing a first person shooter uh, on PSP, you'd use the face buttons for the right side of the screen or for the, the camera movement, which was really tough, but if you bought it digitally on PS Vita, made the game way more playable if you remapped it uh, to accommodate for that. And so, yeah, the classics lineup is always a little strange because you've got everything all jumbled together. And uh, I'm losing my train of thought here. Uh, well, the PS1 stuff, um, you can play that, but the, the real tragedy is that Sony cut off the transfer of content from a PlayStation 3, and so there are some games that are not properly whitelisted to appear on the storefront. Uh, so some games are playable on a PS Vita if you transfer them from a PlayStation 3, and that's the only way they'll, you know, comfortably work on a PS Vita. They don't appear on the store. They don't show up in your download list. And so there is maybe like, I don't know, 20, 30 games, I don't remember the exact size. Um, same with PSP, that is, you know, indirectly cut off because they required the device password setup. But otherwise, they would have worked just fine. And this is also pretty cool, too. Like, minis, like, I feel like a lot of folks don't remember that the whole initiative with minis uh, on PlayStation Portable was that they were trying to market the PSP against smartphones, and in many ways, a lot of PlayStation minis that came over were simply smartphone games, which was super cool. We've got demos, games by genre, themes, which themes there's not a ton on here, and I'm not entirely sure how much is um, how much is kind of like hidden behind the scenes. If you remember that problem on PlayStation 3, where not everything appears where it should. And so if you know the name of it, you can search for it manually and find it. But I'm not sure how much of that is going on on the PS Vita storefront. And apps, we've got <laughs> apps, we've got nothing. So those are all either delisted or you have to have to search for them manually. Family Fun, I don't know why this is like a, a button up here. These always changed over time. And I believe it was in the top center uh, uh, portion here where it'd be game, video, and also PlayStation Mobile, which was another initiative that Sony shut down uh long time ago family funds not even very big new releases uh this was always like near the end of the ps vita's life cycle this was really screwy like it was not updating properly at all and even right now you can see that the final ps vita games ever published 
are not here. They're not where they should be. Um, so we're, we're seeing 2017, 2018 releases, and you know a lot, a lot of the stuff. It's like PS Vita had way more support than people realize, but it, it's just there's the front end of that life cycle where it was console quality games and third party support and first party support. There's that, and then there's everything after, which was still a lot of really cool stuff, but it was definitely smaller, smaller games. Not a bad thing, depending on how you look at it, but. There was a regular flow of you know, PS Vita games coming out, a lot of physical releases, limited releases. Um, some PlayStation Vita fans are just hardcore and they have a crazy huge collection. Um, and I envy it, I really do. I wish I was in a better financial spot at the time to really you know, buy the physical releases that frequently. Because um, now it, it's just hard to go back and either find that stuff because nobody's letting go of it now that they have it and if they do let go of it you know they they want what it's worth um but a lot of uh ps vita stuff came out over the years featured 2015 criminal girls fantasy hero grim fandango I'm not sure how much is uh you know blacklisted on the storefront in terms of showing up because we're on a ps tv uh, i could search for um you know a game that's not supported like uh uncharted which i tested earlier and it does it does show up although it doesn't come up immediately we've got downloadable content and then there's a theme and, and then there's golden abyss which uh technically you could download and install but if you try to try to launch it it's not going to happen now there's a another really interesting thing which was um, the download list, services list, and transaction management. Which transaction management you can look at like the history of like what you were buying and stuff, and that you know is pretty self-explanatory. Download list also self-explanatory. You can see what you were downloading. Services list. This one was pretty weird because you would think this would be like applications and stuff, but I've booted it and you can see these are very recent purchases for me on my PlayStation 5, which there's, they're PS4 versions, so um, I'm fairly certain that uh, uh, PlayStation 3 and Vita cannot in any way, shape, or form see any kind of PlayStation 5 things, right? Uh, but if there's a PS4 version, then it will still show up. So even something like 12 Minutes, Game Dev Story, River Bond, these were all on sale recently, so I kind of picked them up on the cheap. Um, and they don't have any uh, proper tile images for this particular storefront, although below I think is old enough to have it or the developer just decided to supply that image. Uh, you've got the GTA Definitive Editions, you've got Stray, picked up a few things on here. So it's got purchases on the services list, but also if we keep scrolling, infamous right so this is actually it tracks when you when you boot up a what was previously a ps now title um or ps plus streaming but if you boot up a streaming title that's going that's going to appear on here then you've got these are the classic titles like the new classics not not the old ones uh, and then if we go to PlayStation Plus, I thought this was pretty interesting. You can see that um, it's got my membership. It does say PS Plus Essential, and then it's got two more, which I think are just kind of repeats of what should be extra and premium. Um, so, it, you know, it can see those things at a sort of a cursory glance, like it's not really meant to see it per se. But you've got some pretty interesting things on here that show up. So these are all PS3 streaming titles that I did uh, back when I... It was the video where I played a PS Now before it goes away. So those all show up and more purchases. And if we scroll all the way down, there's even more cool stuff that I don't think this showed up in my PlayStation 3 uh, download list because we just looked at that in the other video. Yeah, Super Stardust HD Home. And this one has a date of for the Summer House 2008. Doesn't expire. Singstar, Wipeout HD, that was a PS3 theme, more PS Home stuff, now we've got some Vita stuff on there, Resistance Burning Skies, psnbeta.us.playstation.com, uh, this was for uh, game, certain, some games, I don't remember which ones, but there should be some games on here, yeah, PS All-Stars and Starhawk, 
Hungry Giraffe. So now we're getting into the PlayStation Mobile territory, which I always have a uh, reverence for not only PS Vita, but the PS Mobile stuff because real OGs that have watched this channel for a long time know that there is reviews on my channel for all these games. That was my foot in the door of YouTube content, right? Of like, okay, like clearly nobody's really playing these games or buying them. Not and not to like fault the developers or sort of insult them, but you know, clearly they weren't really moving a lot. But it was something where I've sort of found a niche, right? So if somebody, God forbid, uh, did a Google search of Pinky Spots, Leg Massage, PS Mobile, chances are their number one result was going to be me. Um, so in many ways, I have this reverence for PS Vita as that platform of me, you know, finding an audience on YouTube, which is really cool. But this services list has like just a bunch of junk on here. <laughs> it's just a little bit of everything of your, you know, PSN account activity, which goes back, you know, nearly as far as uh, PlayStation Network on PlayStation 3, which seems pretty cool. But that's uh, essentially it. I don't think there's a whole lot more we can really see here. The prices are always a bit questionable too. Some things are like really expensive, but then again, <laughs> if you're just looking to play PS Vita stuff, you're still going to save more on the store than you will buying these games physically, unless you do some import stuff, um, which for Japan, you know, there's plenty of PS Vita games there. That was the only store that, uh, or that was the only country that saw the most PlayStation Vita engagement. So if you're a PS Vita fan, it might be worth learning some Nihongo because there's a lot of stuff to, to love about Vita over there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't just yet, please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Mystic Ryan, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.